Zolanguela o Veteronugo, a Rui Tabua, a Guido Talitaina na Barrong e na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre. Bula! A Langonoa, e Lutoca, do Talitaca na Bula FM, vai ter na Mandua na Serre. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Regengosa, Bula FM na. É na Cassi. Na Langosa, Mundo Ativo, na Bula FM, na Mandua na Serre, no Sul. Nem Bula Vinaca, na Lango Jerry, e a Melambasa. Aldo Barrong e na Bula FM. Bula FM, number two and seven. In the news tonight, Fiji accepts PIDF chairmanship. Alleged murder leaves Lombasa taxi drivers in fear. And Fiji ideal for re-export centre. From the studios of FBC Suva, Jackie Spade. Fiji has accepted the chairmanship of the Pacific Islands Development Forum following the conclusion of the Leaders' Summit at the Pullman Resort in Nandi today. Prime Minister Vurenge Mbaini Marama has assured the leaders that Fiji will continue to build a legacy for the PIDF that is worthy of its founding ambitions. Details with Philippe Nankasso. While acknowledging PIDF's outgoing chair and his Solomon Islands counterpart Prime Minister, Vurenge Banmarama told the members that Fiji will build on the progress that's been made within the organization. We will continue to carry Pacific interests and perspectives of the highest uh, regional and international stages. And we will place a renewed focus on making this organization a relevant force in the lives of every citizen it is intended to represent. It was also highlighted that a lot of issues in the Pacific are being missed by other regional players and the PIDF must step in to fill the gap. Issues uh, such as the empowerment of women, young people and those living with disabilities, the management of waterways, building up our regional tourism market and combating flows of drugs and illicit uh, materials through Pacific waters. These are the challenges our citizens are demanding that we, as their leaders, address. Similar sentiments were also shared by the outgoing PIDF Secretary General. Pacific organization uh, as, uh, focusing entirely on, on Pacific people. And I think that what's make a bit the difference between the Pacific Islands Development Forum and other regional organizations because we are essentially only uh, a Pacific, uh, a Pacific voice around the table. Bilateral meetings also ran concurrently during the two-day summit. Philip and I, Caso, FBC News. Fiji Solomara has been appointed the next Secretary General for the Pacific Islands Development Forum. Mara takes over from Canadian-born Francois Martel, whose four-year term ends this year. Martel, who oversaw the establishment of the PIDF Secretariat in Suva, has given his best wishes to the incoming General Secretary. Solomara is currently Fiji's ambassador to the United States of America and will take over the reins in October. Speaking to FBC News, Martel says, while praising the achievements of the regional body, says more tangible outcomes could have been reached. It's four years, and uh, in the charter it specifies that we need to review every four years. Um, and and it, I think it's important because there are always emerging issues, and, but issues of ocean and issues of climate, uh, climate action particularly, and advocacy, will still remain very important. Taxi owners and operators in Lambasa are now working in fear following the alleged murder of 33-year-old taxi driver Sanjesh Kumar over the weekend. And they are calling for increased police presence, especially at night. Eleanor Trangaiview reports. The Fiji Taxi Association in Lambasa has denounced the attack and murder of one of its members over the weekend. We are really shocked. 33-year-old Sanjesh Kumar's body was found lifeless early on Sunday morning beside this farmhouse at Wunikawakawa in Nakama, about 20 kilometers outside of Lambasa town. According to police, there were visible injuries on his body. I'm going to say this to the public, but at the moment, this time we are VFI. Taxi drivers are now fearing for their safety and are reluctant to drive at night. I'm very scared. I don't want to drive at night. This is the problem. Eh? It's very new thing in Lambasa. We are very scared. We can't drive at night. Six o'clock, we'll be going back home. This has prompted the association to call for more police visibility. We're needing more patrol, especially night time. 
when the drunkards, the night clubs, there's three night clubs are operating night time until one o'clock. Sometimes they go up to two o'clock morning and uh, we're finding very big difficulties to operate the taxi, especially with drunkards. The association believes there should be a permanent solution implemented to stop the victimization of taxi drivers. Ellen Oturanga will FBC News. Meanwhile, the death of the taxi driver has been classified as murder following today's post-mortem examination. As a result, a 27-year-old man has been charged with one count of murder, one count of theft of motor vehicle, and one count of theft in relation to the incident. He will be produced at the Lambasa Magistrates Court tomorrow. A new study has rated Fiji amongst the highest in the world when it comes to domestic and sexual violence cases. The study conducted by the International Finance Corporation says this is costing Fijian employers almost 10 days of work per employee each year. This translates into lost staff time and reduced productivity, as Kelly Vathala reports. This report suggests what crucial role the employers can play in supporting staff affected by domestic and sexual violence. The most common form of violence reported by both men and women participating in the survey was emotional abuse, harassment or intimidation by a family or household member, followed by physical violence. Of those who reported experiencing violence, a quarter said that the violence occurs at least monthly. IFC resident representative Deva De Silva says employees can play an important role in helping its employees who go through such situations. Employers are in a unique position to support employees experiencing problems at home as the workplace may be the only place where they could ask for help. We have seen people experiencing things like feeling anxious, being depressed and being ashamed of coming to work wearing sunglasses. You know? and, and, and they hide behind the sunglasses and say, I've got an eye disease. Studies such as this go a long way in giving a holistic perspective to the face of domestic and sexual violence in Fiji. From the predominantly victim-based focus and the impact on business and productivity. The International Finance Corporation says financial independence is the key pathway to living violence. A workplace can help those impacted by giving them the financial security they need and helping them to make their own decisions. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. As the hub of the South Pacific, Fiji will continue to assist neighboring countries in socio-economic development. This was highlighted during the Fiji New Caledonia Business Forum this morning. The forum is a platform for the exchange of ideas to boost trade and investment between the two countries. Chasai Nanunga files this report. Fiji will continue to fight to maintain regional economic viability. Being a Pacific hub, Fiji can act as ideal re-export center for New Caledonian businesses to supply products and services to the rest of the Pacific. Meanwhile, New Caledonia will continue to strengthen its relationship with Fiji to boost socio-economic development. Our desire is to build win-win relationships with our partners in the region. And we have much to learn from a great country like your country, Excellency, in terms of development. The president of the Congress of New Caledonia says development challenges faced by the two countries can be addressed through productive dialogue and forums. They are able to implement export strategies because these small Pacific islands also have great, great assist. The Fiji New Caledonia Business Forum will provide a platform to discuss and exchange ideas on how to diversify trade and investment between the two countries. The forum will end on this day. Jose Nunga, FBC News. Meanwhile, the economy minister says Fiji and New Caledonia have a relationship which has the potential to grow. Ayasaid Kayum says the legal impediments for direct foreign investment in Fiji has been removed to liberalize the economy. He says they are working with the Singapore government to improve the digitization program so business operation can be made easier. Said Kayum says Fiji has potential trade opportunities available for companies based in New Caledonia. And of course, there's opportunities for uh, companies that are based in New Caledonia in the area of infrastructure, uh, for example, road making and various other areas uh, that uh, could uh, provide investment opportunities for them in Fiji.
Up ahead, Council works on investment projects for Lomai Biti and Fiji on track to plant 4 million trees. Details after the break. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri. I'm from Lotoka and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. There have been no traditional disputes over the vacant chiefly titles within the Lomai Viti province. This was confirmed to the Native Lands Commission by the chiefs of the province. Provincial Council Chair Chochin Garnivalu says unity is important to or in order to fill these vacant positions in any village, the Kina Oyasana. The chiefs have been uh, briefed by the Luluni Vitrangonwa that he is glad, he is glad to say uh, with authority that. Uh, there have been uh, no disputes. The Lomai Viti Provincial Council is looking to invest $278,000 in Kontiki finance. The money collected from Provincial Council levies will go towards development projects in the province of Lomai Viti. Lena Rees reports. The Lomai Viti Provincial Council currently has $1.5 million invested in Fijian Holdings Unit Trust and are looking to generate more returns for the province through other investments. We are going to go there for investments at the kina level, village level, at the sun level. So that currently we are, we are funding our own, uh, only the salaries are being paid by the government. All the other expenses are being taken over from the ripples of the investment of 1.5, which is already there. The youth group in Sawayeke in Ngawa also playing an active role in the development projects in their village and province. One crib of cover planted will give one youth $50. And we calculated 1,000 cover crops planted by one youth and the money that it will rake in. This plan is then presented to the Sana and Nipanua, and yesterday the chiefs acknowledged the completion of the community hall by the youth, and two more projects are in the pipeline. Issues that were raised today in the three meetings that were held amongst the women of the Lomai Viti Provincial Council, the men and the youth, will further be discussed in the Lomai Viti Provincial Council meeting proper that begins tomorrow here in Sawaya Kingau. Lena Rees, FBC News. Culture and tradition became a clear priority at the UN Decade for Ocean Science consultations last week in Numea. With the Pacific spearheading the global deliberations, a major cross-cutting theme of the Ocean Science Decade from 2021 to 2030 will be the inclusion of culture and traditional knowledge. Maggie Boyle was in New Caledonia and files this report. I think that this is a unique contribution that the Pacific region can make. USP's head of the Oceania Center for Arts explains that the inclusion of the region's connection to the ocean must be unequivocal. So for many of us, I guess our concern and our continual concern is that um, UN, the UN agenda is obviously a blanket global agenda and there's often very little leeway for inclusion um, and people often forget that it's very important to be explicit in that documentation. Another key aspect of deliberations here on the cusp of the UN Decade for Ocean Science is the importance of culture and tradition and its place, particularly in the Pacific. This particular meeting is so important because you have the authorities around the table um, who may not have recognized the importance of indigenous knowledge. Meanwhile, Pacific Community Head of Ocean Affairs, Jens Kruger, says while he expected other issues to top the agenda, he's been pleasantly surprised. We're really saying that the Pacific really has something unique and has something to teach the world, and uh, this is an excitement we've generated, and um, uh, it's really coming from our hearts, and we need to be consistent and, and united in that message. A recent UN report noted that the world's oceans are failing and that we have until 2030 to prevent a catastrophe. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The vandalizing of business properties in Nasori town is a concern for the council. Chief Executive Dayon Orion says the properties are usually damaged after closing hours. The council holds a scheduled monthly meetings with the police, the Commissioner Central and other relevant agencies to look at ways to address the vandalism. 
people do vandalize things, they do do things which shouldn't be happening, but uh, we are just only requesting our police colleagues to be more vigilant in the town area in uh, uh, post-official uh, working hours so that we can minimize and uh, provide more secure environment for our business operators and our public at large. There are currently 1,600 registered businesses in Nausori town providing services to three major provinces, Tailevu, Rewa and Naitasiri. Fiji is on track in its efforts of planting four million trees in four years. Permanent Secretary for Forestry Pene Mbalenambuli says 400,000 trees have been planted so far. He says people are also coming forward and pledging to plant trees. Today, Prime Minister Vorenge Mbaini Marama and members of the Pacific Islands Development Forum planted a few trees at the Pullman Resort in Nandi. Good news coming along. Uh, our people are reaching out to members of the community. And as we speak, uh, we are receiving pledges and commitment to, uh, uh, for landowners to give their land for us to plant some as high as 900 hectares of uh, land. Eh? And Karoy joins us now with business. Thank you, Jackie. Coming up... Banking to be made easier for persons with disabilities. And in growing Fiji, new crossing to boost rice production. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Shamiza. And I'm Salma. We're from Nandi and we love Michi FM because, because it's what? My name is Rajni Talata and I'm from Vatulaloba. Uh, and we listen to FM Sunta hai because it's hot. Hi, my name is Vinita. I'm from Lambasa. I love li listening to Mirchi FM. It's number one. My name is Sagar Reddy. We are in school, we are in the house, and we are in the house of Mirchi FM Sunta. We are in the house of Mirchi FM. Dago Mama. Mirchi FM. It's hot. Leading business tonight, HFC Bank will now work with International Center for Democratic Partnerships to help persons with disabilities. The bank hosted the Pacific Connect Dialogue Network with the center to identify practical projects which will look at inclusiveness for persons with disabilities. Kritika Kumar reports. New simple technologies and ideas will be introduced to make banking easier for persons with disabilities. We've come up with a lot of wonderful ideas on accessible maps, uh, emerging tech like blockchain and how it can be used to uh, sort of improve the accessibility of banking. The innovative ideas will also benefit those in remote islands. It applies not just for people with special abilities but also uh, people uh, in the rural areas as well. So this is an approach to, to enabling an inclusive approach to enabling people to get access to that, uh, uh, that sort of banking service. One of the key conversations this morning has been around education um, and then also access to jobs. So their independence about being able to earn an income. More than 20 participants are part of the dialogue. The ICDP is an independent organization which engages with Pacific governments, businesses, academics and community leaders to discuss digital challenges in order to identify and facilitate the progress of associated projects. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Getting the relevant support needed for farming is what made Chochi Ramasima the best farmer of the year. Ramasima was among the 24 people who received the Reserve Bank's National Microfinance Awards. He is a registered dairy farmer who supplies 110 liters of milk daily to the Fiji Cooperative Dairy Limited and exports eight tons of ginger twice a year. We are one of the farmers who were affected by TB outbreak in Fiji. We are still not free yet. So far we have lost 32 cattle from our farm, but we are still moving ahead and there is no turning back. I always believe that if you are faithful in the farm, if you love what you do, be patient. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. Lakoyani Vo Cooperative was announced the overall winner of the 2018 Microfinance Award. Gary from HFC Bank now joins us with the latest from the trading world. The Japanese yen held near a three-week low today ahead of a Bank of Japan meeting as expectations of an aggressive Federal Reserve cut supported the U.S. dollar. Investors are hoping that Japan's central bank 
can reassure traders that rates will remain low. Against a basket of six major currencies, the US dollar traded near a two-month high. The US Federal Reserve is expected to cut rates by 25 basis points tomorrow, but this is more likely to be a one-off than the first in a series of rate cuts. Elsewhere in Asia, the pound sterling hit a new 28-month low as investors grew increasingly nervous about the prospects of a no-deal Brexit under new British Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Monetary policy is likely to set the tone for currency markets in the coming months as central banks from Australia, New Zealand, Europe, and possibly Britain are expected to cut rates due to low inflation and risks to the global economic growth. And that's all from HFC Bank for today. Pinaka. Here are today's exchange rates as set this morning. The foreign exchange markets were volatile today. The PG dollar rose against the Chinese yuan, the OC dollar, and the Japanese yen. It remained steady against the Kiwi but fell against the other currencies we cover. Taking a look at commodity prices were all on the rise with crude oil just over, over a dollar with $57 a barrel. Gold rose slightly to $1,423 per ounce and silver closed at 16.42 per ounce. Rice production is the small farming community of Balambala settlement in Reketi, Madhuata will now increase with the construction of a new crossing. Eleanor Turangavir reports the new bridge has also opened doors for further development in the community. For decades, this small rice farming community in Reketi has had accessibility issues due to the poor state of the bridge that links them to the main highway. We, the people from this settlement, work together to build a temporary crossing. With the help of the Fiji Roads Authority and the Ministry of Agriculture, community members constructed a new bridge. It was officially opened by the Minister of Agriculture, Dr. Mahendra Reddy, yesterday. With small help like this, we can really uh, have a major boost in production in this area, which was kind of isolated and uh, disconnected from, from uh, the main highway, which you know, gets them access to the market. The Ministry of Agriculture has also committed to properly construct a farm road for the community and put in a proper drainage system. We are very happy that the minister came to open this new crossing. It's the first time that a minister has come to this settlement and we are very happy. The ministry is also looking at providing other agricultural assistance to the 15 homes in the community. Eleanor Turangai Will, FBC News. That's it from Business Tonight. Sports is up next with Jamie. Thanks, Corey, and good evening in sports tonight. It's better to make mistakes now, says John McKee. And Lambasa out to end the 22-year BOG jinx. Details after the break. Nathango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, Waiti Kitivutu Ndiye Nandi, Ya Ondo Marataka Navarronga na Radio Fiji Wana. Yawa Asna Vatili, Yawa Maga Monika. Tondo Varronga Vale, Buna Domo Ibiti Lambasa. Bula, Nathango Aprosla Nangarse, Ngo Erkraki, Do Televeo Navarronga na Radio Fiji Wana, Na Domo Ibiti. Nathango Chani Bukia, Ongoni Namosi, Tondo Talita Navarronga na Radio Fiji Wana, Na Domo Ibiti Esu. Radio Fiji Wana, Na Domo Ibiti. Flying Fijians plan to make a few changes against Canada on Saturday. Fiji played two consecutive Pacific Nations Cup matches at home after losing to Japan in their first game. Coach John McKee admits they made quite a few mistakes against Japan that could have easily been avoided. However, he'd rather they make and fix those errors now prior to the World Cup. Areas of our game we need to improve on, you know, it's, it's very beneficial to us now rather than finding out during Rugby World Cup. But also, you know, it, it, you know the, the Japanese team did put us under pressure, but also we made a lot of mistakes our, of our own. I thought that the, I, I would call them unforced errors. That, yeah, they're, they're forced because, because the, we're under some pressure from the defence. But, you know, to, to be more patient with the ball, to not force the pass, those type of things. Canada's looking forward to its second PNC class to be played this Saturday against the Flying Fijians. 
The Canadians who suffered a heavy 19 to 47 loss to the USA arrived in the country this morning. Akuladama reports. Canada coach Kingsley Jones says playing Fiji on Saturday is a blessing in disguise. Look, we know what, uh, there's no getting away from it. You've got some fantastic rugby players, great athletes, big, strong and fast. Um, and the progression they've made, you know, under the current coaches is fantastic. We're really well coached. So it's a huge challenge for us, but uh, it's one that we prefer. We'd rather be playing against the better teams than uh, the lesser teams, if you like. We want to we wanna measure ourselves against those guys, and I think it's, it's a great preparation for us towards... Um, Rugby World Cup, you know. The team arrived this morning with high hopes of getting some positive results out of the clash against the Flying Fijians. Captain Tyler Drone believes they have to restrict the Fijians' offloading game. Yeah, yeah, definitely going to be a physical encounter. It's going to be exciting. They, we know they offload a lot. Uh, obviously, I, I play with uh, play under two of their coaches every week at the Chiefs, so I'm pretty used to the style of rugby that they're going to be bringing, and uh, it's going to be exciting to, to get stuck into it. Canada will play Fiji at the ANZ Stadium in Suva on Saturday at 5.15 p.m. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Lambasa may be training in Suva for the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants tournament without their coach, but that has not affected their preparations. The Northerners need a win or a draw against Tavo on Friday to qualify for the semi-final, and they're taking all the necessary precautions ahead of that match. Aquila Dama caught up with the team at training today and filed this report. Training away from home is not new for Lombasa, and they have an advantage heading into their final pool match against Tavua after they win over Mba and a draw against Suva. The game against uh, Tavua that is on hand on Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, we are looking forward, uh, we just need a draw to secure our place into the semi-finals, but uh, we will not take anything away from that game as Tavua is always a tournament team and they are well known for upsets. A game plan is key for Lombasa. Even though their school teacher coach will join them on Friday, the team has Matthew Ndunandamu for guidance. Yeah, we have our game plan uh, that is uh, uh, assigned to our uh, the senior players, and uh, we have got Matthew Ndunandamu who's assisting as an assistant coach. And the game plan and the training sessions are delivered to him. Lombasa last won the BOG in 1997, and Durandamu, who won the BOG from Mba in 2008, says Lombasa has a good chance this year. Yes, they, have, they can do it, and you know we respect all the team. All the team want to win, because all the team they train to win, so we're trying to, we're trying to win too. We'll give it our best. Lombasa will take on Tabu at 3 p.m. on Friday at Nausori's Ratu Dakumbau Park. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. That's it from sports tonight. Angie joins you later on with weather and in uh, new media. Check out a Spanish car company using drones to deliver car parts. That's coming up. Radio Umesh Chandra. Our Kanta Chandra, I'm my wife, eh? I'm the radio Fiji to both Sunday Sunta, both a chap program, number one video. Kumar Sami Naika, Bongo Alugu Latoka, the radio Fiji to me, Purana Gana Lage, I may both a chalage. Kumar, Nakati Merata, radio Fiji to Sunta. Radio Fiji to Deski Dharkan. And it's weather time now with Angie. Hello there and welcome to the weather world. Such changeable weather conditions but it mostly stayed warm and sunny. Showers are expected overnight for few areas. In the west it was clear throughout. Let the weekend roll then we will most definitely see showers. Well that's the current trend. Eastwards from Pak Harbor to Suva, lovely warm day with of course showers in the bag for tonight. And up north sunny spells were just the kind we need on a weekend. At sea, east to south, it spins 15 to 20 knots, moderate seas. For the tides, low tide at 11 tonight with high tide at 5.16 a.m. Sunrise at 6.33. For tomorrow, it's more exciting that it's a Wednesday. But on the weather side of things, semi-clear as light showers will intrude. Tomorrow's temps, Suva will be cool at 29 degrees. And what's up on Thursday? Wonderfully sunny. Hope it stays on for the weekend. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie.
Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, can the anti-corruption curriculum help eradicate corruption from Fiji? I think it's a great idea to start with children. Most definitely, there'll be a big impact uh, at that young age. Um, but ultimately, um, change really starts at home. I think this uh, lesson will be helpful because it will eradicate corruption in Fiji. I think this is a good idea because this will help address the increasing uh, corruption issues around the country. Uh, I think that uh, it will not uh, eradicate corruption because more should be done. No, I don't think so. Uh, it depends on uh, how we taught the children. Recapping the main stories for tonight, Fiji accepts PIDF chairmanship. Alleged murder leaves Lombasa taxi drivers in fear and Fiji ideal for re-export Sinta. These stories and others tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking, should police patrols at night be increased? Visit our FBC website to answer. And our shot of the day, a beautiful shot taken on the outskirts of Raki Raki by Ritikash Jr. depicting the importance of protecting our natural environment. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, stay safe. Good night. Today FM, Today FM rocks. I'm Linda Form, I started at Suva. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate, I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm Makereta from Nandi, we love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania, I'm from Lurkaka, and I love Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.